Uh, I like to have the chat there. Um, but yeah, here we are. Uh, State of Fedora 2022. This is my um, traditional presentation, I guess the traditional Fedora project leader presentation. And um, here's this, this time's edition of it. Uh, and yeah, uh, I started last year's with what a year. And uh, yeah, I guess that's the summary this year again. Um, but this time I'm gonna do a little bit different. Last time, and actually usually I kind of focus on like, here's our accomplishments this year. Here's the great things to be proud of. And there are lots of those and we should be proud of them. Um, I'm going to focus a little more on the future and where I think we should go and how we should get there and how we're going to work on coming up with that plan. Uh, so there's a little bit less of the congratulations. And also, we've one of the things we've done um, this last year uh, and in COVID times in general, we've had uh, virtual release parties. Release parties used to kind of be like, like the Hatch meetups, local meetups where people got together to celebrate, hey, we got this release out. Uh, we've made those into virtual events that uh, celebrate what is in each release and kind of invite users and contributors to come together and talk about that. So I think um, we, we've that that's where that's where to see those kind of things. Um, now I definitely want to thank everybody who worked on Fedora and all the changes we've done, all the things both in Fedora Linux technically and Fedora the project, amazing stuff this year. But um, mostly we're going to talk about the future, but um, there will be um, part um, some charts and graphs, of course. I uh, can't, can't resist that. Uh, I do also want to say, yeah, um, we've been really recognized for what we're doing, uh, both it's sort of the official tech press, the big brand um, commercial tech press has had some really nice reviews. And also uh, on, you know, just sort of general chatter and social media. And I went to YouTube and looked and, you know, I did this in an anonymous window. Um, so hopefully it's not terribly biased by my personal search history for things. But uh, yeah, um, it's just so many positive things coming up um, just kind of organically from, you know, uh, I've seen memes about Fedora that aren't the, you know, lame hat stuff from people that I don't know. Uh, it's like uh, growing beyond just, you know, a smaller thing to really a lot of grassroots love for Fedora everywhere. It's really great to see. Um, I put this stuff here. Um, there's kind of a, a theme in it. Um, I'm not not here to compare to other distros. I think we uh, mostly do the, uh, we're really all on the same side of building this community project um, together of, you know, like distro space. But it is kind of nice to see one of the particular vibes is that Fedora is um, kind of a desktop default these days and maybe beyond the desktop starting to be a thing that people look to uh, for new users for everyone. Um, this is distro of choice now and it's it's nice to be in that place and I'm glad people are seeing that. So uh, that's great. And again, thank you and congratulations to everybody. Okay, so uh, we do a contributor and user survey every year. And by every year, I mean, this is the second year, but we're gonna keep doing it. We've got a baseline and we want to continue with that. There is a talk about this coming up. Um, Alexandra is going to present some insights from uh, her analysis of it. Uh, so I'm not gonna go super deep into this, but I wanted to talk about two areas in particular. First of all, we did a um, satisfaction thing. Uh, this is what that is from last year. This is how satisfied are you with the Fedora project overall? And last year we had about, I think, 800 respondents. And it turned out that when I broke it down into people who you know, said they contributed in some way to the project, felt like a Fedora project contributor versus people who identify just as users, it was about half and half there. Uh, but the breakdown was basically the same. It's an average of, 4.2, I think, for the satisfaction. So uh, that's, that's very good. That's a pretty amazing baseline. And this year we had about 20% more contributors, um, which is uh, really good, especially um, coming up. You'll see I'm talking about contributor growth as a goal. So um, I think that reflects probably both more engaged contributors and maybe just a little uh, more Fedora publicity overall. Uh, but also uh, we had more than three times the number of user responses here. So that was also um, 
pretty nice to see. So that's like almost 2000 respondents overall here. So that's very cool. And so uh, here's what that looks like this year, um, which, yeah, um, I don't know, flip back and forth here. Barely, barely easy to see the change there. Um, basically, um, still really good, even with a much larger sample of people that uh, we got really good response here, um, very positive. And here I broke it down a little bit just to see the change. Basically, um, for users, a lot of the people who had been kind of in the meh category before switched to, you know, up to being more enthusiastic up from three to four. And uh, really great to see also a large chunk of people identified as Fedora contributors went all the way from four to five here. So uh, this is a great direction to go in. Um, let's keep being awesome and keep um, keep making things move in the right direction. Uh, so that's really nice to see. Um, yeah, um, then I also went through all of the comments. There were something like uh, 500 and something, a large number of comments. I, I read them all. Uh, and mostly these were very positive. I was, it was nice, a nice experience. And, you know, there's a whole don't read the comments thing. Um, I was happy to read the comments. They were mostly very lovely things that people had to say. And then last year, when I looked through these, there actually came like some pretty big themes emerged. And this year, it was a lot more uh, all over the place. I mean, not in a bad way, but there were kind of individual comments that it was a little harder to connect into big themes. There weren't very many things that when I grouped them together were more than like, you know, 2% of the respondents said one particular thing. So um, except um, as a whole, we actually had a lot of users reporting bugs, um, like a specific problem or saying they needed something, you wanted something different in an application, um, which, Oh, that's fine. Um, it's not really what we're looking for in the survey responses, but I think it also highlights that we maybe don't have a good enough place where people feel comfortable sharing that normally. And so, um, and maybe also um, some work on bug tracking is needed. That's probably a whole nother topic. And I don't know, don't actually have a talk on that this time, but that's, that's an issue. Uh, there was quite a bit of love for our RPM OS tree based desktops. People really like that. And then a lot of, um, you know, we like Flatpak, Flathub, um, that easy access to applications in particular, people were excited about. Um, people like their desktop environments and like the one they like. Um, think overall, GNOME probably got the most compliments and as always the most people who um, feel like going out of the way to tell us that it's not their favorite. That's okay. Um, we do have all these other options and that's an important part of the project. And there's gonna be more on that um, later as well. Uh, there was also quite a lot of, you know, feedback that they wanted to make sure it would still work on uh, older hardware and bringing that up as an equity issue. That's really, that's important. Uh, and it is a challenge for Fedora as a project because we have this uh, mission of moving fast, uh, going, you know, exploring new things. And it's hard to, hard to move fast and also make sure that we're working on a lot of older hardware. Uh, on the other hand, Fedora is also uh, meant to be a toolkit to build things from. So I would love to see a Fedora-based distribution that really kind of focuses on supporting older hardware and that those kind of use cases, a Fedora, either a downstream or a Fedora spin that kind of goes in that direction. I think there's a lot of demand for that. Um, and then some things that were also themes in last year's, um, better documentation, um, but organiza organizing the docs in a better way, um, there's a presentation on that later because this has been something something we identified and are working on. And uh, also um, that you know we have kind of scattered web properties that never felt like a is a landing page that ties everything together. Uh, Mo Duffy is going to uh, tell us a lot about how that how that is under the way and there's a web and apps team that's been working on this. So I think that's exciting. Um, I, I hear we hear your feedback on that and we know it. so that's gonna gonna get better. Um, there also uh, is a lot of frustration about onboarding and about how, uh, sorry, the ding happened in the, uh, the poll came up. Um, I'm very easily distracted. Uh, onboarding and how sometimes when you show up to a group and there's no one there, it's very frustrating. This is also something we recognize and is also going to be a major theme. And we've got um, some talks about mentorship that are going to be very relevant to this. Um, so, uh, as you're re reading the comments, always there's always also some not so great things. I think this time, 
um, identified some that were just definitely spam, like actual commercial spam, um, threw those away. And there were a few that were just really nasty trolls, um, like uh, disgusting. So don't really people, um, I'm sure none of you uh, that were deleted, but um, mostly mostly it, it was very small um, compared to what we see, you know, see somewhere on the internet. So uh, just part of being on the internet, I guess, which is unfortunate. Um, last year, there was actually a pretty high percentage of uh, people who wanted to say that we were going kind of the wrong direction with our uh, diversity and inclusion and equity um, focus. And uh, kind of a theme to those of keep politics out of Fedora, focus on technology. And I, I understand where the not wanting to be, you know, getting into a culture war fight in our project comes from. I, we, we don't want to be doing that and we don't want to make this about politics. Um, but on the other hand, um, free software, open source software, like this is, we're, it's inherently political because we're trying to change how society works and trying to make something that, you know, is about sharing and building things together. And that's a political endeavor. So there are some politics that are necessary. And I also want to push back really hard. And if you want to talk to me more about this, I'd be happy to talk to you in whatever venue you like about the idea that uh, inclusion and that being welcoming to people is um, political. We talk about people and you know who they who they feel is you know, their their identity. We want to make everybody feel welcome in the project, and it's a really important thing to us. It's the one of the the basic values is friends and uh, making this be a good place for everybody is really important. And if you feel like it's not a good place in some way, yeah, um, talk to me, talk to Marie, talk to um, you know, somebody on the Fedora Council, talk, um, let's, let's talk about it and see what we can do to make that better. Um, and I think part of this also, um, we've talked before, uh, we have a code of conduct in Fedora, we have you know, updated that recently and we work really hard on enforcement. And I'd also like to make sure we're working really hard on keeping community norms so that you know people feel comfortable and that people feel if you see something, people feel you know like uh, w when there is behavior that isn't up to the standards we would like that people you know talk talk to your friends about it. Talk to people. Um, don't don't necessarily make it always a code of conduct filing kind of thing. Let's work together to make this be a more welcoming and inclusive place. Because I think um, although we're, we we we're working hard and I think we do a pretty good job. I think just kind of, there's a there's a long way to go in open source. I think um, technology is behind the world in general um, and open source as a area has a long way to go even compared to you know, tech in general. And that kind of shows that there's something that's not right. And I think Fedora should be a leader in making that better. Um, okay, so uh, moving on from that, um, the charts and graphs section. I said that we'd have charts and graphs, so um, here they are. We mu we must have this, um, and also we must have some dinosaur pictures. Uh, this time I used uh, AI called Midjourney to generate this, and it came out kind of creepy. Um, the point of the dinosaurs is really that um, the, uh, we uh, don't really do invasive surveillance on. Fedora users, we do a really, really careful respect of privacy as we try and do this. So um, the project of doing Fedora statistics is more like archaeology, and there's dinosaur bites from the data. Uh, so this one is generated by a different AI called Dolly Two, um, and I think it kind of this one this gets the point apart across without being quite so creepy. Um, we're, we're we're digging through this stuff, and it's a little bit of an inexact science. So um, making things up and trying to figure out what we're seeing rather than really knowing what's going on. But still, I think we can get some information from it. And also, I thought Dolly did a pretty good job with this. OK, so this is first, this is kind of back in time. So this is around the time of the first flock. That's like, I don't know, almost, almost 10 years ago now. And uh, I did a whole talk on this, and I I hope I've got actually, I need to put a blog version of it online, kind of about the history of Fedora release by release. But the basic thing is this was kind of a depressing time. Like we still had a, uh, a tight community of people who really love Fedora and working together, but 
Uh, we are also seeing a lot of decline in use. There was a lot of fragmentation, people angry at each other, honestly, things not really working together as a community because we didn't have a cohesive vision for where we were going to go. And people really didn't feel like they're, they were being heard and respected. And uh, yeah, it wasn't, um, it wasn't good times. And so uh, we saw that as, you know, the Fedora, um, FESCO, the Engineering Steering Committee, the Fedora Board, various other people who just cared. Uh, we worked on a thing called Fedora Next, which was an idea to make an intentional strategy for how we were going to make things better and grow in the next, uh, at the time, five years. And so uh, we worked on that strategy and got it you know, officially approved by the board. Uh, I see Stephen Gallagher in the chat here. Stephen was really instrumental in this. Um, and then, yeah, so um, it worked. I can see that over the next few releases there, um, that the purple one there is um, Fedora 20, where we were kind of working on it. We had a whole release that we, we intentionally took a whole year rather than six months to do it. And um, that release turned out to be pretty popular. And then we saw growth from that, which has continued to that day. So um, yeah, this is good. Uh, we've, our, our strategy are worked there, but I think, you know, five years is up. It's been more than that. And so it's time to work on the next one. So that's what I want to talk about for, um, hopefully, I don't know, taking too long in this part, but, um, the, the rest of the talk here coming up, uh, but I do want to dig into a couple things also from the stat. So this is from our new, um, count me system that does a little deeper analysis without still tracking individual systems. People, uh, systems report in and they're tracked kind of as a cohort rather than uh, individually. And so there's no uh, system tracking, but we kind of see what's going on here. So um, here, this is just sort of by uh, percentage from the different variants that we track here. And so actually um, there are a couple more that actually show up here um, above 1%. Um, I think the rest those are lumped into other here, but these are the main ones here. And you can see uh, Fedora Workstation and Fedora Cloud are really the biggest things. We actually have the way to distinguish between uh, what I call ephemeral systems and persistent systems. Ephemeral ones uh, show up in the count once and then um, don't really contribute to the growth in systems that are around for two weeks or you know up to the longer categories. So I can tell that those systems are, um, either for short workloads, cloud burst kind of things, or for CI or for testing or whatever. And so we can see the distinguish and the, the uh, distinction there, that's the word. And I think the main thing really is just that um, workstation and cloud switch. So obviously if you're looking at the short lived systems, it's a lot more cloud and a lot less of the, um, you know, long running desktop kind of use. And I think um, also unspecified comes out a little bit. So unspecified is systems which don't identify as a particular spin. They're either, um, there might be some spins that still don't identify themselves, but I think they all do now. Um, so it's systems that people have put together from a custom um, install or, um, or have been around for a long time and upgraded and have never gotten that set. Uh, that's that unspecified thing. I would like to see um, that smaller and smaller because I want to see what's going on more. But I think also that um, custom case is still always going to be a thing. I don't know, maybe you'll try and figure out a way to make a distinction there in the future as well. Anyways, I find it very fascinating. And I think it's a, um, a interesting way to see what we're, what's working on. Um, container images, someone asks there, actually container images report as container and um, I, they're actually broken out separately. I did not show them there. So there are containers. I think there are about 60,000 of them on average, it's a pretty pretty big chunk. Um, I completely took this out of that. Uh, they're not, yeah, they're out of that data set completely. Um, so it, it's that's all done separately. It's not actually very interesting to look at it by itself because it's just a bunch of lines going up and down depending on usage that week. Um, but yeah, that's uh, I actually separate out snappy and container. And I think um, toolbox currently identifies as container, but it's going to be toolbox in the future soon. So I can kind of see what those things are there. Um, and um, someone asked, sorry, uh, actually, if the downstream repos that might use Fedora um, would get caught up in unspecified, um, they might, uh, but probably not. They would have to actually be using an Etsy OBUS release that identifies as Fedora and hitting the Fedora updates mirrors. Um, so uh, 
they're at least calling themselves Fedora to get categorized in there. Um, I, I should look and see what non-Fedora names are showing up. I haven't actually analyzed the data there. That's an interesting thing to do. But um, OK, let's not get me sidetracked on this. I could really, there's a lot of deep dives I can do. Um, we probably um, should make this a whole separate talk on grass because I kind of enjoy it. It's fun. Um, yeah. So I did also do um, desktop spins that are separate from, um, I, I took out workstation just so we can kind of see here at the, um, the, the ones that are uh, at the you know, uh, lower, they kind of shoved into the, um, the fringes of the chart. If you just look at there, and just going to see the popularity of these things here. And the one thing I want to call out here is that we do put a lot of work into some of our niche things um, like the comp neuro, which is computational neuroscience focused um, deliverable. Um, you know, it's down there at the bottom and there's some other things, Python lab, I um, mean, you know, I don't know, astronomy spin. I'm not sure which all of those are currently active that are not really even showing up in my stats. I think that means they're less, I've, I've filtered out things that are less than a thousandth of a percent at any, any given peak. Um, so, uh, there, there might be there near the bottom, but pretty low. And I think that's, um, yeah, I, um, those things are also important. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a popularity contest. If you have your audience of a few people that love it and work on it, and that's your thing, like, that's cool. We want that to be available and we're still going to provide support for those things. I think that's an important part of Fedora. Um, we'd also like to see these things grow. And I just want to talk also a little bit about how we can do things like the design suite and the, this kind of use case focus things differently in a way that maybe gets them more exposure and use in a different way. Uh, but that's one of the future topics there as well. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the other ones that doesn't show up very much, just kind of barely there, is um, IoT. And this is the Internet of Things. And this is actually one of our uh, flagship editions. And I checked the, uh, the reporting in is working properly on it, but we are seeing very few actual systems there. And I think there are two things here. One is that there are some big deployments of this, but they're actually using a completely custom thing and they're using their own mirrors. So it's not hitting and they, they sh may shut down the, the counting here. So there are some, there is some large use of this that isn't being accounted for, but still um, I kind of want this to grow in small use cases because I think IOT is really important to the future of Fedora. I think, um, when people come into computing these days, it gives a hands-on, you know, hacker and accomplishment experience that is hard to get on a computer in the same way that I had growing up in the 80s and working on an Apple II where um, the software, the commercial games that one could buy were not really that much more sophisticated than something that I could make. They were, you know, even for the next decade, there were games that were, you know, two-person team that was a big mainstream hit. Um, now, I know there are still indie games that are like that, and it's not all about games, but a lot of software is just a huge production. And when I've been trying, you know, I've done some things where I've uh, taught programming to children, and in those cases, a lot of the frustration is they sit down and, you know, they want to make their version of Call of Duty. They want to make Fortnite. And it's like, well, you can't, sorry, um, is a kind of a bad way to start, right? So um, I think a lot of these small devices, microprocessor stuff playing with Arduino and uh, the Adafruit stuff, like that's very cool, but also like little devices you can actually run Fedora on and have Fedora IoT, like make it do something cool. That's really important. So we need to build this up. Um, there's a talk about IoT later today, and there's something, another one, about um, Home Assistant, which is actually something I care about a lot, home automation um, later. So this is, uh, if you're interested in this, help get involved. Um, I have some ideas on what, you know, what the problems are. And I think a lot of it is hardware access and just like uh, we don't, we don't ship on a Raspberry Pi out of the box. Maybe there's something we can do there to make it better. Um, but yeah, um, this is something that needs help. And then another um, one that I, notice that needs some help. Um, this is Fedora Cloud. Like I said, one of our most popular things. Um, you can see that uh, this is broken down by release. I can read that here. So um, 
F-34 continues to be incredibly popular. And so this is, by the way, uh, ephemeral systems. This particular slice is short-lived systems. They're being installed new and running. And so even though F-34 is old, it continues to be the most popular. And we didn't have the same uptake of F-35 and F-36 is even worse, even though it's been up out for a while. So uh, David Duncan says he personally is to blame for this. Uh, I don't think that's, that's fair to himself. Um, but uh, he would like help is honestly what it comes down to. And this is something I talked about a little before and I wanna emphasize again that we can't have Fedora groups that just depend on one person. As awesome as that one person is, we need to make sure we have depth. And so, um, yeah, if this is something that's interesting to you, please help out, get involved so we can have a team working on this so that um, no one person can ever feel like they're failing in an area and that we have um, this going and growing. And this is obviously a pretty big growth potential area for Fedora Linux and Fedora project as a whole. So let's, um, yeah, let's get this going. Okay. So that was the stats, and here is the next five years part. Um, I'm going to take a drink of water here because I've been talking and I'm going to lose my voice. Um, I talked about this a little bit last year and kind of started on where we're going, and I call it Fedora Next Next at that time, and that is terrible. Um, someone help me and come up with a better name for this because it's going to stick and it's bad. Um, think, think, think of something clever for our upcoming strategy. Um, but, and I also um, decided to use Mid Journey to illustrate these because I think Mid Journey is very good at making uh, mystical, weird looking things. It likes to make people staring into the distance. Each of these, each of these next slides is a thing generated, I think from, from the headline here. Um, so yeah, kick this off in State of Fedora last year, and then we've been working on some um, discussion.fedoraproject.org is the focus for where we're talking about this. I know a lot of people are very attached to mailing lists. Um, this is another presentation I need to make. Um, I would really like to see us move to discourse. This is actually a thing that came up in some of the comments. Um, a lot of people are in favor. Some people really like their mailing lists, but there was kind of a, please pick one because now things are getting more fragmented. And honestly, I would like to pick discourse. I think um, Python community recently made that decision. They're moving all of their mailing lists to discourse. Um, and uh, it's a different way of looking at things, but I think it has a lot of advantages. And sorry, that's a whole sidetrack. The important thing is that's where we're doing this conversation. We've had some threads there um, and had some conversation, uh, but also uh, for the next steps of that, COVID has made this really hard. In the past, the Fedora Council has really worked on our strategy and direction by getting together in a room um, several times a year. Usually we have a council meeting that is just the council in one location. And then we get together around DevConf, usually in Brno in February and around Flock in August. So we have together high bandwidth talks. We really work. And we've tried to do that virtually and it just isn't the same as getting people in the room and forcing them to do it. So this has been a little slower than I've liked. So uh, Marie and Ben and I got together um, a couple weeks ago and we took some of these ideas that were from the discussion and things we had and we kind of put together a skeleton for what we think, what, what we're kind of coming together on for this strategy. And so the next steps here, we're gonna kind of work on what uh, these ideas are the direction we're, we're going. So if um, the things I'm gonna talk about next, if you think I'm missing something big, um, come to the discussion and make sure that that gets included. If you think something's the wrong direction, um, this is where we're leaning now. So time, time to say something, um, here we go. And so here's the guiding idea. Um, this is generated from the idea, the picture here. Um, but yeah, in five years, I'm gonna have twice as many people who are working actively every week in Fedora. Right now, I think that number is around 300 or so. I'd like to see that be, you know, 600, 700 something people um, who are really actively involved every week. And I think that's um, gonna be kind of the key tracking metric for this. I know we also want user growth and that's also gonna be important. And you know, number of systems going up in my charts, very important. But I think the really big thing is we wanna see the project feel really healthy and vital. And that's the, that's the headline thing. Um, someone says in the chat, this is my distracted here, that email is still going to work when um, 
when the youngsters are old. Um, I don't think it is. I think it's going to break. It's falling apart right now. I'll, I'll uh, talk to you offline about that, though. Like e emails on the way of Usenet. Sorry. Um, but uh, sidetrack on my own personal passions about how to make things better. This is more of the overall picture. And I uh, did not make discourse be a headline item there, even though I care about it. Um, so yeah, um, how are we going to take this guiding idea and make it into reality? So we came up with three big topics that are the goals, um, the overall goals is kind of the, the main air, the focus areas that we're going to work on here. Or actually, I think it's that there's focus areas within these goals. So these are the main goals. And they are accessibility for everybody, innovation and leadership in the district space, and also growing from three editions, which was part of the Fedora Next strategy, to being a multi-project um, project, project uh, in a, in a um, a big umbrella kind of way, which is a vision I really have for Fedora that I want to see us uh, make more true. I'll talk about them more. I've got slides for each one. I wish I could have myself here. So yeah, first of all, accessibility for everyone. This is really important. I think there's uh, we've had a number of people who are blind or have other uh, you know accessibility issues come to us and say we're doing a terrible job. So um, yeah, we we hear that we can do better. So I think. First off, um, practical accessibility. That I like that Ally A11. It's a it's a nice little um, you know mnemonic slash uh, abbreviation for accessibility. Um, the first uh, thing is practical. Improve our software. Um, our websites could be better. Um, I think this is actually one of the areas where discourse is very good. They the website is you know, uses modern web standards and the accessibility tags there in a way that our, a lot of our other stuff doesn't. Um, also want to improve the content of our documentation to be more accessible and be more inclusive of people who are using software in different ways. And we want to improve the OS itself, make sure the installer you know, works with the speech, um, you know, text to speech and all those different things. And then we also, uh, it, it can't be just the, the software or the operating system itself. We need our own tooling for packaging, docs, you know, design, all of these things to also be inclusive as well. So there's, this is a big project to work on this. Um, and one of the nice things, I think Red Hat's hired somebody to work on the desktop team for some of this stuff. So that's that's a step, but it's a thing that's gonna really require all of us to work on to make it really happen. Um, and then we also want to, uh, the accessibility, kind of, it just isn't about, isn't just about that. And we wanna make sure that we have Fedora Linux on the Fedora project available to everybody in the world. This is part of our Fedora vision overall that we are making a better world for everybody. Building open source software together as communities, we want to share that vision. And so there's some simple things like you know, making it easier to get Fedora Linux more pre-installed system. I think that's kind of part of making it available for everyone. I think that goes to the IoT things as well. Um, we want to make sure that our help is better, that people are able to get the support they need and that it is friendly, that when they get into IRC, they don't get chewed up by having, you know, uh, not understanding the norms that the channel might have. We want to make it have a friendly experience there, um, better documentation, again, a continuing theme. And we also want to make sure that we are supporting people, you know, Fedora communities around the world in sharing Fedora and spreading it in their local communities, both um, local meetups, ambassadors, um, and, you know, Fedora, the localization, translations kind of work. We want to make sure that that is really getting the support that it needs. And I think that um, we've, we used to be better about that in the past, and we have kind of fallen, and I think we need to build that back up again. That came up as a thing. Um, we also then want to have um, innovation and leadership in the, in the distro space. And this one, I had to break into two slides here. Um, I It's pretty impressive to me that Midjourney kind of keeps a color, like the color theme consistent through these here. It doesn't actually always make things this color, but it seemed to like it for my, my slides. Um, but yeah, um, we want to focus on leadership in, in the community and how we run our project. And one of the really big themes there is mentorship. Um, we have kind of the idea that everybody in Fedora should both be a mentor and have a mentor. And so we're working on doing that. Um, Yona and Vipul and people worked on a mentor summit this last year. That was a huge success. We want to expand that. There's a whole number of reasons we want to do this. We want to help better onboarding 
We want to help everybody who's already in the project grow, both by you know helping others and uh, both by you know being helped, but also just being a mentor to other people is a great way to learn and grow yourself. Um, we also want to make sure that we have continuity, so that you know when you're showing what you do and sharing your knowledge, that it um, makes sure that you know that what you're doing will will survive even when you win the billion dollar lottery and go to build your alpaca farm somewhere like you can be sure assured that what you were working on is going to continue um and then you know, kind of a moving moving from sort of just a pride of i'm the person who does this to a, the pride of i am part of the team i've helped this team be successful in this part that i really care about in the project and making building up that kind of pride and then of course also building connections you know from the non-technical or mind share parts of the project i don't want to define it as negative but as i've talked about a lot before um in open source there's often a, an assumption that this is you know about coding about engineering that that's the the main thing people need to do in the project and while obviously engineering and code are crucial it's sort of it's the heart of the work in um, making a distro um you, you don't i don't know keep my body metaphors um heart maybe not be the right thing it's it it's it's part of it but uh, maybe the heart is actually actually something else so, um yeah I, I need to think about that one before I'll, let's, let's let's leave the metaphor aside um the thing is in order for any project to be successful we need more than just that um, coding skill we need all these different skills and we've been working on that but we also need to make sure that we're working on connections between the people who are doing that engineering and deep technical work and people who are working on other parts of the project so i think the mentorship goal is going to help bring that together as well, because it doesn't need to be just mentoring into a topic that you're working on in a technical way. Uh, we also need to work more on um, diversity and inclusion and positive community norms. I talked about that already. I think that that's still a big focus. And I think Fedora has shown leadership in this. A lot of people, a lot of communities have code of conducts that are inspired by or based on you know, Fedora's work in this area. And you know, we have got practical experience for doing this for a long time. We really wanted to believe that be excellent to one another was sufficient code of conduct. And we've learned um, there's got to be there's got to be more and there's got to be um, standardization around it. And so leadership there is important. And I think also leadership in it's not just about a code of conduct. It's not about hard rules. It's about how we all treat each other. And that's important as well. And another area which I don't know, maybe I should have expanded on as well. Uh, we want to do some things where we can kind of track and measure community health with actual numbers in a way that helps us show that we're doing what we want to do and helps us maybe tell our story um, to you know, our sponsors and to other people that you know we are um, working on this and that we're uh, making things making things happen um and of course we also want to do um you know the technical leadership and um actually i'm going to talk about this the least but uh, i think there's just a lot we can do in operating systems that will make it go beyond what we have today but still provide the value that distros have i think a lot of people who are like it's we don't need the distro it doesn't matter everything's the language stack like people are learning that lesson um, that, you know, uh, uh, probably a lot of us um, graybeards are like feeling a little bit, I told you so, when we see, you know, the things where the language stack uh, falls apart when somebody uh, decide, uh, uploads something to the uh, Python repository and pick on Python, but wherever that um, people were depending on didn't realize that it was um, very easily just, um, changed out from underneath them and i think as a distro we've tried to make a balance between kind of the developer and user needs as kind of a, a middle place where people work together and share things and i think like there's something really still deeply important about that space that can be bigger than what it is today we need to work on those things um notice i didn't say modularity once in this whole talk um, but i think this problem um, where what people want from an operating system where things everybody has a different idea about what parts should move fast and what should move slowly um, we haven't solved that yet and i think we've got some ways to work on that using what we already have um, to do that um, we need to work more on that as well um, and then yeah, this um, third third area of growing beyond the three editions thing. I think this is really kind of um, 
that's when you saw my graphs that strategy worked it was a good approach and i think that because it worked we are able to kind of go to the next things and kind of focus on what we can do more we're going to keep keep building on that success and add to it as well and i think kind of the the big areas here are we want to really make it easy to make you know, these spins and remixes and it should be really simple if you have a good idea for like I want to have a desktop environment that works a different way. People shouldn't feel like, and then I'm going to build an entire distro and support GCC and glibc and you know OpenSSH, whatever, so that you can make a disk. Like we've got we've got a distro. It's it, it's very good. If you want to like showcase some idea, like Fedora should be a place that you can work on that. So that's one thing, and that might be something within the project. I really like I said I like the big umbrella idea, um, but also room for you know downstreams remixes. We want to make sure that that's successful. Obviously, um, Amazon Linux, and we've got to talk about this coming up as well, uh, decided that Fedora was a good good place for exactly that. So that's exciting. And obviously, also RHEL, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, built from Fedora. That's important. It's going to continue to be important. And RHEL is also going to be changing just because you know the, um, the needs of the market change. And so the thing that you know is based on Fedora and causes Red Hat to give us lots of money, frankly, um, that's changing. So we need to make sure that we're going to support that as that changes and grows. And um, but then also a smaller projects like um, you know, there's a gaming based spin that I've forgotten the name of right now. I think that's a lot of interesting exploring stuff. We want to encourage that. It's cool. And then the other thing I mentioned earlier, like um, we have Fedora Design Suite, um, Python Lab, Robotics, um, the computational neuroscience thing like those are right now um, collections of software that are grouped together as bootable media and it had a lot of the idea of like you want to set up a computer lab quickly here's a pre-configured computer lab setup and i think that's um that's not such a big thing anymore i'm so sure there's still that out there in some places but i think that's probably not a primary thing we should focus on but these are really successful groups that are doing great things. And so we want to find a way to um, present that in a way that doesn't break that, um, you know, the team spirit of, of the groups working on these things and find ways that you can have collections of software, curated collections of software around a theme in Fedora Linux that, um, yeah, uh, bring teams together to build things um, that aren't necessarily bootable media. So I think that's part of it as well. Um, but someone, so yeah, this, um, yeah, these are not Dolly generated. These are generated by Mid Journey AI. Um, Dolly tends towards being more cartoony things, and actually, it actually in some ways is smarter. And so when I threw these um, subjects at Dolly to generate slides, it came back with things that were basically trying to make slides, which was pretty funny because it actually like put words and bullet points, but it, the words were just nonsense letters. Um, but uh, funny, but not not pretty illustrations. So I went with the pretty illustrations here. Um, and then, yeah, um, the next steps here, uh, where are we going to go next with this? So I already said um, the discussion.fedoraproject.org is kind of the central place for this. And this is an area where I have homework. Um, I'm going to start some threads that are kind of based on what I'm talking about here in each of these areas and the Fedora Council, but also everybody should participate in this because in order for this to be successful it needs to be a ground up project um, we do not do top down um, dictation of strategy uh, the fedora council's job is really to find where the community wants to go and enable us to be successful um, i think these are places we want to go and um, please help us build up this strategy together that's how this is going to work um, i think one of the things I was going to talk about earlier, but didn't emphasize enough. So let me, let me, let me put this here. Uh, we tried to decide things by consensus in Fedora because uh, as a community working together to build a thing going in one direction, okay, I, I mentioned that we felt like things were kind of fragmented and not, not cohesive. Um, and that was part of why things were frustrating. Having the project working towards a goal that we all have kind of identified and have had our input into makes it easier for us to 
except when things don't always uh, fit exactly what we choose. So when we did Fedora Next, we listened to people and talked about different things, but we made a decision, you know, Fedora Workstation is going to be GNOME based. And a lot of people were unhappy with that. Um, but I'm glad to see that, you know, people who are unhappy with that, although there was unhappiness, have stuck around. And I hope that's because, you know, we have people feel like we're listening and value what you're going you know what you're working on and and what you how you want to do it even if that's not the decision that we made and you know sometimes uh, the decision will go in a different direction and i think that uh, as a community when we know that we are all friends we're working for shared goals um, we can talk about what we want to do and make hard decisions that sometimes you know are um, pushing in a, in a direction that isn't you know what everybody would want but the people who who for whom it is not the direction that they would choose can see, okay, this is in the spirit of where I want to go. And I can see that people are working with me. And I think that's what we want to do in this strategy. Um, but we are going to have to make, you know, a, any strategy is what we are going to do and things we aren't going to do where we're going to focus. So that's um, please participate, help that, help that really be successful. Even if, you know, you feel like um, you are a dissenting voice. We, we want that. We want all of all the voices. Um, and specifically, um, logic model all of the things. Um, a logic model is a way of presenting a organizational structure and theory of change, how we're going to make this happen. I've talked about logic models a lot before. I'm not going to repeat that here, but I will repeat it on in the future discussions. Um, that's going to be the framework we're going to put this into and then kind of build out some documents and things from there. But the logic model is sort of the next focus of what we're going to do. Um, and then, yeah, um, here we are. Questions. How much time did I leave here? Did I any time left? All right, a little bit, right? I think not. Um, we'll, we'll see. Um, one minute. Okay. Um, do the next session start right away or do we have time to run into the break? I can, I can run into the break. 40 seconds. Okay. Um, Q and A. Um, we have one question in the Q, Q and A. Um, how many users use Fedora for commercial and educational use? Um, I don't have any way of really breaking it down into sectors of things. Um, I guess my, it, it, and because we don't do the deep tracking, um, I, I kind of have to go off the number of systems that are installed and, you know, not all the systems are checking in and our new check-in system, you know, the DNF count me doesn't show older systems that are there, but I think it's probably, you know, um, million-ish, but probably not 10 million-ish, uh, and probably also not 100,000-ish. So, you know, on the on the order of a million, basically, I would say. I think that's, that's how many there are. I would be happily surprised if it's a much larger number, but I don't think it's a much smaller number. Um, uh, yeah, have we ever considered adding some OS metrics that users have to opt out of? Yes, we are. Uh, and I know this is a really difficult thing because we, you know, our community values privacy, and that's one of the important things that you know. I think a lot of you know people use Linux because they because privacy is an important thing, and um, having something that is community built rather than built by a, a corporation trying to extract money from you. Like yeah, um, you know, our our goals are different, but. Um, yeah, having better, deeper metrics is very important, and I. I I'm not sure if there's a talk on this here, but there is work um, on something, particularly the workstation team is working on this, but I think we would like it across all of Fedora for some more detailed metrics about, you know, what, what hardware people are using, how they're using it in some ways, um, again, in privacy preserving ways as much as possible. And, you know, what packages are popular that, that Debian has PopCon that you can opt into. We don't have anything like that. Um, I think that would, um, Yes, yeah, so we, we, uh, there's some work on that. So I think that would be um, that would be a good thing. Um, I and I know it's hard to do, but I think that's something that's important. Uh, how is the GitLab migration going? So we do not currently have an official migration to GitLab. We just have, excuse me, some parts of the project that are starting to use GitLab for some things. Um, it's hard because GitLab is you know an open core project, and as an open core project, there is there's an open source part to it, but in some ways um, it is not 
quite the same as being part of the sharing um, community where every where it belongs to everybody. The open core kind of says there's an asymmetrical thing where this is mine and people are uncomfortable with that and I understand it. There are parts of it that are, you know, a proprietary. And so uh, when we talked about using that for disk git, um, there was a lot of you know, people were very uncomfortable with that. So we need to figure out how to do that because um, there are some security issues with Pagger and Pagger is our Git forge that is homegrown, made by some awesome Fedora people, but we just don't have the resources to really support it. And um, it's hard to use in some particular ways that make it um, difficult. Uh, and there are um, also some network effects we're losing out on because it is just not nearly as widely used. We're going to need to figure that out. It's a big upcoming conversation um, that along with um, you know, Bugzilla going away, um, we need we need to figure that stuff out. So. Um, yeah. Um, can problem reporting in Fedora be faster? Um, yes, I'm sure it could be. Um, that this is actually there's a couple of comments about this in the survey as well. Like this is this is kind of the improvements in the OS. Um, yeah. Um, badges. Badges have been problematic. Yeah, Fedora badges. I didn't actually put that you know, in, in the strategy as a called out thing, but it is something that is really important to us as community tooling. Um, the badges project kind of shows but rewards people for participating in a fun way and kind of shows paths for where to go. So I think improving badges is really, really important. And that's something I've asked the CPE team, the engineering team at Red Hat um, to figure out a way to focus on, um, even though it is not something, it, it is not um, like it's not package build tooling. It is to me just as fundamental to Fedora success as um, you know Koji, the package building platform um, because it enables us to do what we do. So um, we're, we're working figuring that out. But it also can't be just CPE. We kind of need other people in the community. And part of this community growth is hoping that we can have people, a, a bigger team around that, that will be able to work on the software and on you know more badges, more, more um, admin moderation of the badges stuff so that we can have that, that grow. Um, and let's see. Um, someone asked about sneak peeks into Fedora 37. Um, I'm, I'm not going to do that here. There's probably some other talks um, that maybe go into more of those kind of things. Um, but uh, you know, take a, take a look at the changes page. The st stuff is in the works right now. Um, there's a question uh, about whether we are constrained by what RHEL wants for features, or is the sky the limit? Uh, the sky is the limit, actually. And actually, that is there's there's a talk tomorrow about you know what what Red Hat wants, and part of it really is um, if Fedora were just doing what Red Hat thought was best, Red Hat wouldn't get the the actual advantage of having a community um, input into things because Red Hat's success really has never been when Red Hat has had great ideas. Red Hat success has been when there's great ideas out there and Red Hat figures out how to um, work with those, support them, integrate them. She so might talk about um, 35 Fedora releases in uh, uh, 30 minutes and kind of goes into that as a theme that's emerged over Fedora's history and in, in the relationship with RHEL. So yeah, I think um, it's really important. Like it's not limited by what, you know, our, 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 big, our big sponsor wants um, it's particular things for RHEL, but RHEL and Red Hat success really requires, um, you know, all the experimentation and different ideas in order for that to even work. So even just from a very pragmatic way, RHEL wants, wants us to, you know, uh, do weird things. It's good. Um, I, I think that's, that's the questions there. Um, thank you very much, everybody. I'm really excited to be here at Nest. Um, I wish it could be in person, but I, um, this is, continually been the best uh, virtual event I've attended um, over this whole COVID times. I think it will continue to be that way. And um, it's not just because I'm biased because it's, you know, Fedora. Um, it's because all of you are so amazing and put so much into this and put so much, you know, love and passion and just everything into the project um, that it is humbling and wonderful to be a part of. And uh, I love you all. This is such a great, uh, great time to be together here. And yeah, uh, enjoy the rest of the conference and I will see you around.